afternoon, ladies. Oh, it is afternoon It now. is. We've already got to afternoon. Well, it's actually about 10 o'clock at night when we're recording <laughs> this, so who knows what kind of day it is. Okay. From whatever time, time of day. Watch. Yeah, yeah. Greetings. We could go with greetings. Greetings. And salutations. So, earthing one. Yes, so that is mine and Kerry's <laughs> greeting, greetings and salutations. But one has to say greetings, and then you say? Oh, earthling one. Yeah, no, I do I say greetings and salutations, and then you say oh, earthling one? Yes. Ah, okay. We'll so go. anybody hears it, like I would say greetings, oh, earthling one. No, and salutations. Oh, man, I don't know what it is anymore. <laughs> anyway. Let's take you back because you're not here to hear the <laughs> witterings and greetings of me and Kerry. So, um, I um, wanted to do a footstep for this image because it's about guiding and and direction. Um, so, I thought a footstep would be really good. And then I found the compass image, which I really, really loved. So, what I actually did was I traced a footstep. Mm -hmm. but then I created a rope outline of a foot so um, I can post the image if anyone wants just ask I can post that out um, onto whatsapp so that you can have a copy of it um, but you can see it sort of looks can like can you not just link it in below the video <laughs> <laughs> she says me being the one that does that no <laughs> okay. I just thought I'd ask um, so yeah so um Kerry, do you want to give us the verse? Let's have a look what we're looking at today. So it's Psalms 48, 14. Indeed. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will lead us even to the end. Mm. It's that directional stuff. So it's really interesting because if you um, have seen some of our other videos... I wrote this, at, I, I wrote this, I drew this at a time when I was really wanting direction. And I still do to some degree, let's be fair, ladies. I think that would be an ever-present thing every single day of my life. I don't know about you, Kerry, but... No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all good, I'm all right. I'm all good. <laughs> Sorry, I don't oh, No, no, no. So, so good. <laughs> Many people I know would think I need a lot of guidance. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yes. So, that's really where it comes from. Because I think so often, especially living in the world as it is today, there's a lot of self-sufficiency. There's there a lot of consumerism and instant gratification. Amazon Prime. <laughs> Guilty pleasures, lady. Guilty pleasures. <laughs> Crafting items. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Again. The, I think sometimes it can be really hard when we feel a bit lost or a bit like we're lacking direction or guidance because actually that's not the norm. No, we in society rarely, I would say, have to really work at something unless there's a specific goal in mind. Mm. Because I think it's it's interesting. I I'm very aware that the thing that is stuck in my head that you have said a number of times is to be Christ centered, not crisis centered. Mm. And I think, particularly at the moment, it can be incredibly overwhelming to watch the news. Because to be fair, uh, I don't watch the news because it's all bad. So that's a given. But. I do watch uh, Dr. John on YouTube, who actually gives an update on COVID globally, daily. Yes, yes, I do. So the interesting thing is, the reason I can listen to him is because he gives me the facts. He doesn't give me the drama. Yeah. Um, and when I don't want to know, I just don't press play. Mm. And I think, but what, but the whole point of you talking about being Christ-centred is what I've kind of been looking at because I think the other thing I read was when we don't know enough about God, it is easy to misinterpret mm. who he is. Yeah. And so since you told me that, I've kind of been trying to look and, and go, okay, so where do I find out who God is? And I think... God wants to lead us. Mm. God loves us. God has promises for us. But I'm aware that 
sometimes I actually just listen to the Bible on audio, on an audio book. So it's read to me. Because originally the Bible was actually told in the synagogues. Indeed, it wasn't written down originally. No. So ladies, I'm just going to jump in here. So I took the image that I was tracing from and I just cut out the toes and I cut out the middle bit of the foot. I'm just using these, I, they're water weights really, jars with stuff in or pots. Um, I use ink initially and then I go in with the lovely trick of watercolour, um, liquidated down, but really pigmented and doing different... Liquidated. Liquidated, new <laughs> words. <a> <laughs> Acclimated was the other word that I asked Kerry what it meant earlier, because I've used it several times recently, thinking, no, oh, I'm not quite sure, but okay, we'll go for that. Um, but yeah, so liquidated down and just <laughs> um, tapped on a pen to create different splodges. So... If you think about wanting to understand who God is and find God in our everyday lives, because I do believe God is in our everyday lives. He says, I was there before, I am there after. He is our ever-present presence. Um, Always a tongue twister. I find, though, that when I get busy with life, when I just get busy with living... I don't see it because what I'm doing is I'm looking at my feet. It's a bit like dancing. Yes. Do you enjoy the experience of dancing because you're looking up and looking out? Or do you look at your feet and spend your whole time thinking, what steps next? How am I going to do this? Well, to be fair, if I'm lying dancing, I'm looking at the person in front of me's feet because their feet know what to do and mine don't. (laughs) But it's it's really interesting because... I must admit, I tried ballroom dancing with my husband. Oh my gosh, that was just like an argument to music. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turns out, ladies, it's going to come as a great shock to you. I'm not very good at being led by somebody else. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's the challenge, because in the busyness of it, it's actually stopping long enough to acknowledge God in the centre of it. Mm. And going back to your... Don't be crisis-centred, be Christ-centred. But I think you've got a point there with ballroom dancing and you said, I struggle to be led. Part of my battle and my struggle with God is that I am an independent woman, ladies, and I am proud of it. You're the toddler on the floor in aisle three, aren't you? I am so the toddler on aisle three, four, five, and six <laughs> every single day. But because of that and because... Out of necessity, my life has taught me I need to be independent. I need to, you know, be able to be self-sufficient. Actually, what that means is I am a control freak. So I work very hard on controlling everything around me. And that includes people, food, uh, my emotions, everything. And I think at times... I don't allow space for God to come Absolutely. into my life. Absolutely. But it's really interesting because if I look, and I think th- this is why story is so important. The story of what our life and who God has been in our life is so important mm-hmm. because I'm always reminded of, you know, the Israelites would always stop and build an altar or put stones on top of one another to remember. And they would tell their children. And I think the importance of meeting together and actually holding conversations and saying, this is what God has done in my life. Because I know when I chose to go on a missionary ship instead of a naval ship, I know that God blessed that. Mm. You know, when I went on my first Alpha course, I met my husband. When I went on my 13th Alpha course, I met Jade. And I've met loads of people in between on the times when I have been obedient to God. Mm. And clearly, I'm a control freak. Um, But I'm aware, when I let go and allow God to lead me, Mm. I actually gain more than fighting for control. So one of the things that I know that you say quite a lot is let go and And let let God. God. Absolutely. And I think that is a mantra that I would love, genuinely love to live by. I don't think I'm there yet. Yeah. It's a process. I don't think, you know, when you become a Christian, you are saved. 
Mm. But the process of sanctification, becoming more like God, only gets there when you get to eternity. Yeah. And I think... So that is, sorry, someone once told me this earth is a little bit like becoming heaven ready. Mm-hmm. So tell me if I'm wrong. So that sanctification yes. is a little bit like we're a, we're a stone at the moment mm-hmm. and we've got jagged edges. And what God is doing with us through leading and guiding us is he's chipping away at some of those rough edges. So when I'm a little bit sharp with somebody or I um, lose my patience with other people, God's given us opportunities to learn the things that he really desperately would love us to accept in our lives. Absolutely. So the only tweak I'd make to that story is actually we're a diamond and we're being all those edges that, you know, in order for a, a diamond to shine, it needs to be cut and bits need to be removed. Mm. So as we move closer to sanctification... You can clearly see more and more of the diamond as it's having those parts taken off. Mm. And those facets on the diamond, so all those little bits that catch the light, Mm. are about times when God has taken something, in many respects, our greatest strength is also our greatest weakness. Mm. So for me, I know that I can run things, organize things really, really well. But that means that I can also be quite controlling Mm. because I can do it well, so just move aside, let me do it. And I think it's very important to see that your greatest strength, so when you focus on your weakness, you forget that actually that's a strength too and God can use it and he has used that in your life. And so I think... It's very easy to get fixated on the negatives rather than actually seeing the positive. And sometimes, if I'm absolutely honest, the positive in your day is the chairs have remained whole while I sat on it. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Because actually, if you look, if you think about sitting on a chair as an act of faith, Mm. when you go to sit on a chair, you don't go, oh my gosh, do we think that chair's going to hold out today? But actually... Well, some of us (laughs) might too. (laughs) But the the important thing to remember is actually you practice faith every day. Yeah. And and so you were telling me that you said when we read the last book, we don't have to do it alone. Mm. But not doing it alone doesn't mean that God wants to control you. You're not an automaton. No. You have free will. Well, yeah. So, ladies, sorry, let me just explain, getting too deep. I feel like we could have afternoon chats like indeed, this. Indeed, indeed. Sofa um, talk. <laughs> sofa talk. We're actually a podcast. So, um, the rope, I simply used a um, pencil and I did lines going from one corner to the next, joining in the middle, and then I used my finger to blend it to give a smoother colour. Um, I used a trace table app. Um, in order to get the words written on and I am just using ink here so I think what you're saying is really interesting and I think being able to allow space for God in our lives and allow him to to work for our good because you know with the job that I do I, I meet families in a place where they're probably at the worst position they've been in and are in their struggle and actually I haven't led a privileged life necessarily it has been a struggle and it has been hard and what's really interesting was a mum said to me the other day I feel like you see me because actually my response back to her was broken can see broken because actually I can understand how someone might think and feel about a situation because actually I've had hard times and it hasn't always been wonderful. And I think we have greater empathy. The more we experience life, the greater empathy we're able to hold. Yeah, Yeah, because I can remember my mum saying to me, she says, I do think you have become a remarkable woman Mm. because in the pain and the anguish, that you have experienced and that you're having an autistic child has meant is that you can see other people's pain. 
Mm. And I think when somebody sees your pain, you can trust them with your worries. Indeed. And I think, you know, that's what God meets us in our weakness. Yeah. And when he, and it, it sounds so trite, but when we are weak, God is strong. strong. And it's kind of being prepared to remember that God is leading us somewhere. Indeed. So ladies, I wonder where it is that you are being led and what God um, wants and is doing in your life. But I just pray, I just pray that there is space and opportunity for God to lead you in this week to come. So ladies, we hope you have a lovely weekend or Sunday, Sunday afternoon now. Um, Week. Week. (laughs) Let's have a lovely week. (laughs) Love you all lots. Bye. Bye.